Civil War, a struggle for survival. In this era of force and destruction, historians will argue, what was the most influential factor? What was the most deadly instrument, the most deadly weapon? Was it the overwhelming manpower? Was it the blistering fire of the burning rocket? Was it the thundering mail from heaven, the bomb, the blockbuster? Was it the lightning-like dissension of the silent parachute? Was it the withering stutter of the light machine gun? Or the staccato of the Garand rifle? Was it the brutal juggernaut, the patent tank? Was it the flamethrower? Or was it the screaming anger of the faster than sound, quicker than death, B-2 rocket? No, it was none of these things. The most effective, the most deadly, the most terrifying weapon of all time was... Yes, you're right. The sergeant's whistle. All right, you guys, now I'm going to tell you something. Got a kaino's coming, see? And as usual, a kaino ain't very happy. And I ain't very happy either. Look at this jank that looks like Coney Island on a Monday morning. Hi, Sarge, what's the action? Did you see Corwin? Yeah, I seen him, but I couldn't take it, so I sent him over to the mess hall. He's on KP. Okay, take him away. Right, Sarge. All right, my friends, now I want you to fall out, spread out, and pick up everything when they ain't growing or nail down. <laughs> They get steak, caviar, and whipped cream cake. They have fancy cooks who know what cooking means. In the army, we get mess, and it really is a mess. Oh, the navy gets the gravy, but the army gets the beans. Ding, 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 ding. Salami to your boy in the army. Yes, the navy gets the gravy, but the army gets the beans. Ding, 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 ding. is ideal printed menus every meal and they decorate your plate with parsley green in the army we get chow that you won't feed a chow oh the navy gets the gravy but the army gets the beans beautiful beans gorgeous beans succulent beans and the bologna because i'm skinny and bony Yes, the Navy gets the gravy, but the Army gets the... Bing, 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 Nothing but beans. Loving those beans, hugging those beans. No, I didn't mean it, Mommy, I love ya. Nothing but beans. Bing, 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 bing. Oh, I was born at the age of three, as smart as I could be. Sure, it takes a great mentality to dish out all the beans. Bing, 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 bing. Oh, it seems bell bottom pants are conducive to romance. They are wine and dine and love by movie queen. But you wear a khaki frame and you get a wacky dame. Oh, the Navy gets the... The Army gets the... Jackpot, but it's always a crackpot. Yes, the Navy gets the gravy, but the Army gets the beans. Did you know that the Navy 
gets all of the gravy. Did you know that the army gets all of the beans? Oh, a soldier's a coward if he doesn't lick the platter clean. Oh, a soldier's a coward if he leaves a solitary bean. Oh, it isn't the fighting that will make a soldier cross and mean. It is only the beans. You can grab a Marine and you show him a bean. He says, what does it mean that I never have seen? So you grab a civilian and one in a million can identify. So I say to you, why do we got to have beans? Multiple beans, product and beans, succulent beans, nothing but beans, beans. Nothing but beans. What do you think you're cooking around here? Beans? Ah, oh, shut up. You've been getting away with murder and it's got to stop. You understand? Shut up. Just because we were friends before and used to work together, I've been covering up for you. That's got to stop, too, you understand? Shut up! Now get your pack and everything that goes with it, and I want to see you down front in exactly five minutes. You understand? Shut up! You're going to go on a long, long journey, and you may not be back this way. You understand? Shut up! Get your pack and everything that goes with it. Be down front in five minutes. You understand? Shut up! You're going on a long, long trip. You're going to be there soon. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! He's liable under AR 605-300. What's more, the CO can get him on the 104th and 107th articles of war. Now, the record goes on his WDAGO form 20 and 24. He could be eligible for a 615-360, uh, section 7, paragraph 49. Oh, sure. I get you it. You saw how he acted in CCB X1 and 2, and last summer it was a 293. Do you think it's covered in 615-360? Sure, an MR1-92. His profile is 24.4.4 D point. Oh, brother, I ain't in the army. I'm back in the numbers racket. Here's your mail, Corporal. Well, I guess they'll take another crack at that bandit. Do you think it'll work? It should. There was a guy in here a little while ago that fixed it. About time. How do you like that? Now you don't even get the nickel back. This creepy army. I asked for a transfer again. They throw me right out of the battalion headquarters. John, I see how many times I have to tell you. This ain't a day room. All right, sir. You got a cigarette? Yeah, here. Tell Sergeant McVeigh I want to see him right away. Right. Is Miller in? Yeah. Hey, Miller, what do you think we got here? Midgets? Captain, what about this training film tomorrow morning? Oh, yes. That begins at 7 o'clock. Now, the theater's two blocks away, so I think we better fall out at 6.35. They'll want us in front of battalion headquarters not later than 6.25. In that case, Davenport, have the men lined up and ready to go at uh, 6.15. Roger. I'll take care of that, sir, right away. Oh, uh, Lieutenant, one more thing. Make sure... Look what they gave Miller to issue to every man in the company. Bulletproof underwear. You know what that means, don't you? Sure. South Pacific. Sergeant Puccinelli, as you were. Uh, Sergeant, we have a special movie tomorrow morning, and I want the men to be in uniform and ready to fall out at ten minutes past six. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, just one more thing, Sergeant. Just to make sure. You better have the men fall out at five minutes past six. Yes, sir. Hey, Sarge, that Corwin's lost again. Well, you better find him. Right, Sarge. Hey, you see them lights? You see that sign? Well, let's be turning them off. Sergeant McVeigh, we've got to see the work, don't we? Yeah, well, what if Colonel Davis comes? He don't like lights on in the daytime. Another thing, McVeigh, the company has an early formation tomorrow, and you better have those men fall out at five minutes before six. Five minutes before six, huh? Yeah. Oh, I tell you, I got some names here that are cockamamies. Ladarsky, Schmelowitz, Kizeli Osmiak. Let me fall them out early. Say about 5.45, huh? Okay. Right, son. 
Someday this guy's gonna blow his brains out. If you ask me, he's already done it. Sergeant, the other room. Go around the outside, through that door. That door. specimen you are. Get up. Look at this. Look at that. Fix the helm. Now get out on the parade grounds. Ten times around. Double time, understand? Then come back here. I got plans for you. Go on, get the lead out of your bucket. Wait a minute. Come here. Got a cigarette? I've been arguing with the adjutant again. Yeah? I don't dig this army at all. I want overseas, I stay here. The guys that want to stay here, get overseas. You forget there's a war on. Yeah, but what do we get to do about it? When I was a civilian, we had something doing every minute. Singing, dancing, working in nightclubs. I join the army, I sit on my hands. Nah, I'm hungry. I think I'll inspect the mess hall. Hiya, Sarge. Been waiting up for me? How come you're late, Edwards? I was drunk. I don't blame you. With a kisser like that, I'll be loaded all the time. Why, thank you. You're welcome. Now go to the barracks, Edwards. Get into your fatigues and report back here. And if you have any social engagements, call your secretary and have her cancel them. The sergeant's real brave today. I get any mail? Sure took you a long time to sober up. Took me a long time to get drunk. My new girl had a date with another Joe last night. What's the matter, losing your appeal? Does that look like I'm losing my appeal? Wow. Very tasty. Hello. Hello. Is Sergeant Puccinelli in? No, he's out. Uh, what did you want to see him about? It's of a rather personal nature. Oh, would you like to leave a message? 
Yes. Just tell them Millie was here. I'll be back in ten minutes. On second thought, do you mind if I sit here and wait for a while? No, no. Go right ahead. Thanks. Clark, do you have that field manual? Four copies of this, Clark. It's to go to the adjutant. But, sir, I did this yesterday. Oh, you did? Yes, sir. Uh, so you did. Well, I want one more copy. Yes, sir. You know, it takes a fantastic amount of paperwork to administer even a little tank company such as we have here. Are you ready, Ernie? Uh, not yet, dear. I'll be right with you. I've decided we can do without another copy of this. That's our commanding officer. Which one? Who in the company is that girl married to? I don't know, dear. Shall we call Luella Parsons? Now, darling, don't get testy. I just happen to know that she's a Titusville girl, she works on the pulse, she has a calcium deficiency, and she's expecting. Expecting? Yes, and don't ask me what she's expecting. Where in the world did you uncover all this, Mrs. Sherlock Holmes? At the clinic yesterday. I was there for my cold shots, and one of the nurses told me about her. Let's say, I just remembered there's been a mix-up in the O.D. roster. I know. I uh, may get it. No, you won't. Lieutenant Teray is stuck with officer of the day. Are you sure? Yes. Sally Pearson told me that the adjutant's wife told her that the adjutant said so at noon. Oh, well, if Sally said so, that settles it. How are you getting along with uh, Colonel Davis? Well, that depends. How are you getting along with Mrs. Davis? That woman. She's so rank conscious. How soon will you be ready to leave? Why don't you go to the club and wait? I have a lot of papers to sign. Can't somebody else sign those? I'm the only one. The United States Army has a high regard for my signature. I wish the First National Bank did. Where'd you get these clothes, Sergeant? Quartermaster, sir. Then why didn't you get a shipping ticket when you got the clothes? I don't know, sir. Maybe they weren't paying attention when I drew the issue. Then this is stolen goods. <gasps> no, sir. I think I'll have to have a look at Army regulations. But, Lieutenant Davenport, don't you trust me? This is no way to run a business. Carry on. He's going to tell me how to run a business. Used to be a soda jerk. He just ran out of soda. I got to see the first sergeant. Hi, you kid. I see you're still wearing your old head. You leave me alone. I got troubles. In the army, you got troubles? Yeah, and I got to see the first sergeant right away. It's important. Take it easy. Don't tell me how to take it. I got to get a three-day pass. <laughs> The last guy in the U.S. Army that got a three-day pass was Sergeant York. Yeah, well, I don't care. I gotta see my wife. It's an emergency. I've had emergencies, but could I get a pass? Bet you were never having a baby. Kid, I never even had my appendix out. Corwin! Yes, sir? Did you do those penalty tours? Yes, Corporal. To report to the drill sergeant? Yes, Corporal. To report to the mess sergeant? Yes, Corporal. Okay. Boy, if I ever get overseas, the first thing I'm gonna do is surrender. Concentration camp's got to be better than this. What crummy coffee. Why well, wouldn't wash my... Hey, it's here, the shipping order. Came while you were out. Now watch me get out of this hole. Hey, Sarge, I wanted... What to... do you want? Nothing, I just thought that maybe... Get I... out of my way. Can't you see I'm busy? Captain Caldwell, I've just seen the shipping orders and I have just a man for you, sir. Good. Who is he? Me, First Sergeant Victor Puccinelli. Don't be foolish, Sergeant. This call is only for privates and PFCs. You'd better make up your mind. You're staying here. I've seen armies. Well, I won't argue that point. Now, about this shipment. We can't be expected to cripple ourselves, so don't send anyone who's useful. 
How about that kid who never does anything right? You mean Corwin? That's the one. Well, he's right out here now, sir. Maybe Eisenhower can do something with him. Yes, sir. Corwin. Huh? I want to see you. I, I've been wanting to see you, too, Dick. I wanted to know if I... Get your hands off my desk and call me Sergeant. Can't you stand up? Yes, Sergeant. If I could get a three-day pass. What'd you say? I want to know if I can get a three-day pass. Did you get permission from your platoon, Sergeant, to come in here? No, Sergeant, but I... How many times must I tell you that in the Army you got to go through channels? I know, but this is an emergency, and if I go through the section leader and the platoon, Sergeant, and you and the CO and everybody else in channels, my kid will be old enough to be drafted as hell. Very funny. I can't be giving you a three-day pass every week. You just came off one. That's not true. I haven't been on one in a long time, and if my wife forgets what I look like, you'll be responsible. We'll see about it when the time comes. You heard me. Yes, Sergeant. Aren't we going to rehearse our act for the show? Oh, get going. Wait a minute. Come here. How come you didn't shave today? No one said I was supposed to. I didn't shave yesterday. Nobody said nothing. Get out of here. You always didn't use to treat me like this. Oh, stop mumbling. You always didn't use to treat me like this. That's what I said. So there, too. You're going to start that again? Yes, I am. You're supposed to be my friend. We lived on the same block, in the same city. And you know what you promised my mother. Stop hitting my desk. And what did I promise your mother? That no one would harm a hair on my head. You mean both heads. Ho, ho, that's rich. Oh, quiet, peahead. Just because we were friends before... Friends before anything, is right. Anything to do with now? I have a responsibility, and you're part of it. Well, I'm warning you. You're driving me crazy. That's no drive. It's a short putt. Uh, what do you want? Special privileges? No, I just want you to remember you were the best man of my wedding. You're not kidding. And we was buddies, and we wrote songs, and we sang, and we danced together. And you still owe me $8.75 from before the war. And we was friends and pals. We were just like brother and sister. And what happens? Along comes a crummy little long clip-clop. You turn into a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Clyde. What is it with you, anyhow? All right. All right. All right. All right. Big man. Couple of stinking stripes. Big deal. Go home and wash your face. Go home and wash your face. Big deal. Look at him. General delivery. Get out of here. What's the matter with Einstein? He thinks I bombed Pearl Harbor. When Edwards comes back, tell him he's being shipped out. Say there was a Millie here looking for you. Millie? Wonder what you want. Oh, I know. What's the date? 29th. That's it. Tomorrow's the anniversary of our first alert. Alert? This outfit's never been alerted. I know it. I just used it as a gag. You know, the first time I saw Millie, she looked real good to me. But all I got was ice cubes. So? So I told her we were being alerted. So? So she let me kiss her. So? So I took her out a few more times. So? So she let me kiss her a few more times. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing, except one day she started to talk and I found out how dumb she was. You know that dame's really 60 cents short? Not only that, she got on a getting married kick. What is it with these dames? They all want to get married. I know a lot of nice people that aren't married. Then one night I took her out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, sir. After you tell Edwards he's being shipped out, send him in to see Miller and have his supply record checked up. Right. Cute corporal that was here when I came before, aren't you? Yes, but uh, Sergeant Puccinelli still isn't in. I don't suppose you know if he's going to stay in camp tonight or tomorrow night? No, well, you see, we never know when we're going to be alerted. I know. Ours not to reason why. Ours but to do or die. That's cute. Look, uh, why don't you write him a note? Write him? Mm-hmm. Well, you do it. Just say... I'll be back at 6.45 when I get off from work. And put down it's important. And if I don't see him, there might be trouble. Okay. If I see him. You know, he's not the easiest guy in the world to locate. Don't I know it. Well, I have to get back to the PX. We're terribly busy today. We're closed. Closed for inventory. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. 
Well, they did it again. The adjutant just stuck me with officer of the day. I know. You know? Well, why didn't you tell me? My wife just told me. Did she also mention when the war would be over? She doesn't tell me everything she knows. Clark. It's okay, she's gone. What do you have to say? She left you a note. She said she'd be back 645. Come in. No! But, Sergeant! You got permission to come in here? No. Well, get out. They think all I have to do around here is hand out passes. What was I talking about? Millie. She said if she doesn't see you tonight, there's going to be trouble. I better catch the first bus into town. Hey, Corporal, would you know where I can get my hand? Hey, house them lights. The clown's coming by. The offices, too. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but the colonel is coming, and you know how he feels about lights burning in the daytime. And you know how I feel about it. Yes, I do, sir. All clear. Okay, turn him on. Hey, where's Corwin? He's been running in and out of here all day long, and if he keeps it up, we'll have to put in a revolving door. Has he got permission to skip training? No, and you better find him. We'll send him to the CO. Right, Sarge. And another thing, Edwards and these guys are shipping overseas. Come in. Come in. Get out of here. Come back here. Get out of Come here. Come back here. Let's be explaining why you ain't been in no classes all afternoon. I've been looking all over you, McVeigh. Oh, you've been looking for me, huh? Yeah, I want to know, could I have permission to see the first sergeant? No! Yeah, but I gotta see him. You don't gotta see nobody! I got a message for the first sergeant for battalion headquarters. But why didn't you say so? He didn't let me. Call when you never learn. You know, before you take off on details, you gotta tell your platoon sergeant. You was the one that sent me on a detail. Well, that don't make no difference! All right, what's the message? It says that you got to report to the dispensary in the morning for a physical examination. Physical? Let me see that. My application for paratroops went through. Hey, Sarge, you need me for anything? No, take two weeks off. Right, sir. Well, wait a minute, Sarge. Form 38's filled out in case of discharge. Discharge? What does that mean? Oh, he's right, Sergeant. Uh, according to paragraph 8, article 40-100, 24 hours prior to discharge of an enlisted man, for reasons other than physical disability, he must be examined and Form 38 filled out. <laughs> they can't you. do this to me. Sergeant. What? When you get home, will you call my mother? Oh, get out of here. I'll refuse. I'll go in and tear battalion headquarters board by board. Captain Colton, you do something about this. They want to discharge me. Me a 4F or well, they're crazy. Oh, Sergeant. Well, go ahead and read it for yourself. Sergeant Puccinelli, Millie will be no, here no. at six. No. WDAGO form 38. Now calm yourself, Sergeant. Your application for warrant officer has come through. You are being discharged to accept appointment as warrant officer. Me, an officer? Well, oh, that's worse. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Would you make out tomorrow's morning report and send it to battalion? Morning report tonight? Yes. From now on, they want it in the night before. It's a discharge, so I can become a warrant officer. Congratulations. Hey, what's this deal about me shipping out? There's no deal. You're just on a movement. You'll be leaving in a couple days. Oh, look, Sarge, how about crossing my name off that list? You know, I got a new girl in town, and we're pretty serious. That's very touching. Listen, I gotta see my girl, I tell I've you. seen the girls you go with. You'll do better where you're going. Yeah? Well, I've seen your type, too. Well, why don't you drop down to the Rialto Theater sometime? The Rialto? Yeah, the new red-headed usher. Helen? That's right. Why, I'm a dirty, low-down, no good... You win that argument. Go ahead, start another one. You're cutting in on me. I go with Helen. You went with Helen. Now I see why I'm on shipment. You're pulling your rank on me. Yeah. Don't do it, Sarge. 96th Article of War. Sock him and a cat will bust you. Put this on the bulletin board. You can take off, wise guy, and start packing. I've got work to do. This ain't no pool room. No. I could have sworn I just saw an eight ball. Now get out of here. I never. 
never went to college. I haven't got much knowledge. But there are some things that I know, I know. I've gone and made a survey, a very special survey. And I discovered that statistics show. And what do you think you're doing? I'm singing. You call this singing? Didn't you like it a little? I didn't even like it a lot. You have to admit my voice is different. Come on, Sarge, let's hear you sing it. I can't. I got some work to do. And besides, I got a date in town. Oh, come on, Sarge. Okay, one chord. It's easier to say I love you than Tondo and a high And wouldn't you rather say I love you than Tondo and a high It's easier to spell Kiss me, dear, than Tondo and a high And wouldn't you rather hear Kiss me, dear, than Tondo and a high To quote a famous Yale professor Osculation is a sensation that is nice. If you should ask a Harvard lawyer, he'll charge you twenty dollars and he'll give you this advice. It's easier to say I love you than time to wander high conical And wouldn't you rather say I love you? Than Tanda Wanda Hoy Conakala. To quote a famous Yale professor, osculation is a sensation that is nice. If you should ask a Harvard lawyer, he'll charge you twenty dollars and he'll give you this advice. It's easier to say I love you. And wouldn't you rather say I love you than Tando and a high Tando and a high Tando and a high All right, Colin, come on. Let's get going. Come on. How long before Miller gets here? About 20 minutes. I'd like to find a joker that spread the rumor around that I'm already a warrant officer. That's why. Every time I walk into the barracks, some nitwit yells, Tension! I walked in while McVeigh was shaving. He snapped to attention, nearly cut his throat. Sergeant McVeigh cut his throat? No, nah, he just nicked it a little, but he bled like a stuck pig. Okay, you lucky people, you can go to town now. I'm ready to take over. Take that junk into the captain's office. Right. And take that with you. Hey, Colin, give me a hand with this, will you? Well, I guess that wraps things up, Clark. Go on, get home to the little room. Okay, Sarge, see you in the morning. I'll be back in a minute. Hey, Corwin, don't forget you have to police up outside, too. Listen, Shaughnessy, some babe might drop in here soon asking for me, so tell her I'm out running the obstacle course. Okay, Sarge. You know, Shaughnessy, I kind of wish that McVeigh would have cut his throat. How could he blow his whistle? You know, some people tell you when you get in the army, you get used to it. But they don't say how long it takes, and I ain't getting any younger. You know something, Corwin? Thanks, Corporal. Come on, let's be giving me the pass. So what are your plans for tonight, Sarge? Oh, I guess I'll get me a couple of beers. Oh, gonna wet your whistle, eh? You brat. <laughs> Come on, let's be hurrying. Hey, there's something you missed. Let's be getting on the ball. Yeah, but nobody can see up there, so... Well, don't make no difference! Getting awful sloppy around here. Gotta be neat. Gotta be tidy. Because if we ain't, somebody's gonna get it. This army ain't just a place to have fun, you know. Well, if 
if anybody asks for me, I'm painting the town. And when I'm painting the town, I'm painting the town. Big man. Gotta be neat. Gotta be tidy. Here's something you missed. Let's be getting on the ball. Yeah, but Sergeant Oak can see that. That don't make no difference. And when anybody's asking for me, I'll be out painting the car. And when I paint the town, I'm painting a car. Take it easy, son. What does McVeigh have to be in the Army for? Why couldn't he be in the Navy? I can't sleep in the afternoon on account of that guy. Well, why don't you take a poke at him? Me take a poke at Sergeant McVeigh? You know what they do to me? What can they do to you? There's nothing lower than what you are now. Look, in the regulations, it says you can challenge anybody in the Army. If you think they're taking advantage of you, ask them to put the gloves on with you. You mean I could start Sergeant McVeigh in the nose and nobody say nothing? Sure. <laughs> what if he hit me first? But you don't let him. You see, it's a matter of science, lad. Come here, I'll show you. Strike a pose. Now, you see, first you got to pick a style. Uh, John L. Sullivan. No, that's not for you. Wait a minute. The Jack Dempsey Crouch. That's better. You're a killer. Get low. Lower. Lower! Uh, uh. Hey, I got it. Come here. Tony Canzanieri. That's it. He was a ballet dancer. Oh, no. Look, you gotta have rhythm. Watch. Yum, bum, 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 sing, sing. Yum, bum, 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 sing, sing. training. For what? I'm going to put the gloves on with Sergeant McVeigh. McVeigh? Yeah, I'm going to jab his head off. Where do you want the body sent? Send it to McVeigh's parents. Your body. Go on, get in and finish the rest of your work. Vic? No. Can I just talk to you for a minute? All right. What do you want now? Remember that song we wrote together? Yeah, what about it? Well, we got a telegram from the music publisher, and he wants us to put the song on a record and send it to him right away. Well, go ahead and make a record of it. No, I want you should record it. Get Bing Crosby. I like you better. Oh, you don't have to fight McVeigh. You're punchy already. Why? Just because I like you better? See, at least you can do a show a little consideration for me. Sure, I know you're a sergeant, and I'm only a private. At least you can do is be a little friendly. All right, I love you. I'm your friend. What do you want me to do? If you never ever give me a pass again, I don't care. Just take this song into town tonight. You know, to that place where you put a quarter in the machine, instead of writing home to your mother, you send your voice on the record. Here's a quarter. But I got a date. So what? Take your date to the recording booth with you. Might be a little warm. It might be a little fun. All right, I'll record it. Millie. I'll be seeing you. Come in. Oh, hello. Hello. Is Sergeant Puccinelli in? Oh, no, he's out in a bivouac. Oh, that's a shame. How'd it happen? Say, haven't I seen you someplace before? You might have seen me at the PX, number 10. I used to sell beer. But I asked to be transferred to the candy counter. What happened? Did you get hungry? Good evening, Corporal. Oh, hi. Aren't you going to introduce us? Uh, Private Edwards, meet a friend. Friend, meet Private Edwards. Your name's Millie, isn't it? Millie doesn't look it, but she just switched from beer to candy. 
Would you like to take your break now, Corporal? Uh, definitely. Glad to have met you. Oh, thank you. If you want anything, just ring for the bellboy. He's nice, isn't he? Do you think Cutie will be here tonight? Cutie? You mean Puccinelli? No, I don't think he can make it. But anything you want to tell him, why, you can tell me. What's your name? The charge of quarters is so crazy when he introduced us that all I remember is that you're a friend of his. U.S. That's cute. Monogram blankets. My name is Caldwell. Private Ernie Caldwell. And I was just thinking that if you're not doing anything tomorrow night, Oh, why... tomorrow night. Hello. Don't you know enough to knock before you come into a room? Gee whiz, I was just down at the PX and I thought Corporal Shaughnessy would like some ice cream. Well, set it on the desk. I'll see that he gets it. Spoons inside. We'll keep this between the two of us. You don't gotta worry about me. I'm no snitcher. Got a cigarette? Can I have a pass? Are you nuts? You're restricted. But the fellas forgot the music. I gotta have a pass. Nothing doing. Corporal, it's a matter of life and death. Nothing doing. Here's a light. What do you have? 
Cream de cassis. Cream de cassis? Excuse me, little lady. How about a little drink? Hmm? Please. Hey, can you sing Mount Kari, baby? Bartender. All right, Romeo. Well, I'm just buying a little drink for Mount Kari, baby. You've had enough, Sergeant. Mm -mm. I ain't going to stop drinking until she starts looking good to me. Now. You know, you are the first dame I ever met who didn't remind me of any other dame I ever met. Well, bartender, how much do I owe you? A half a bar. <laughs> Thank you. You've been very nice. What were you saying? Uh, how about singing a little song? Huh? Little song for soldier. Would you like a? Uh... Creveden song, or a Groblin song, or possibly you'd like a Lablo Binbinden song. Hmm? Certainly. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> you play this, please. Oh, sure. Thank you. It's easy to say. I love you. Then turn to one more carnival love. And wouldn't you rather say I love you? Then turn to one more carnival love. It's easier to spell. Kiss me, dear. Then turn to one more. Carnival love, and wouldn't you rather hear? Kiss me, dear, than turn the wonder hoy carnival love. To quote the famous year professor, "Asculation is a sensation that is not." If you should ask a Harvard lawyer, he'll charge you twenty dollar. He'll give you this advice. It's easy to say. Je peux tout le potasser, le tout le monde le potasser, le potasser, le tout le potasser. Carnegie Law. Nah, can't be. And wouldn't you rather say? The potosel, the potosel, the potosel, the two, then turn the wonder hoy, turn the wonder hoy, turn the wonder hoy, turn it around, turn it Alvin. Alvin, what on earth are you doing in that outfit? Are you nuts? Me nuts? You guys ran off and forgot the music. What did you get caught? Never mind. Get Pooch in that recording booth. We gotta have those records the first thing in the morning. He's over there. Now, as I was saying. Yes, Vic. Helen, you look so wonderful tonight. Could I interest you in a slightly used kiss? Hey, Sarge. Now, what do you guys want? Uh, we had to go back to camp. We forgot the music. Well, don't bother me. Give it to Sam at the piano. Okay, sir. Right. What's the matter, Vic? Oh, nothing. Just one of those things. Come on. What is it? I didn't want to tell you, but... But what? Well, we're being alerted. Alerted? Shh. But, Vic, well, what am I going to do when you're gone? Well, Helen, you're going to miss me that much? Sure, Vic. 
this may sound a little hokey, but well, I wrote a song, and I'd like to make a record of it just for you. Oh, Vic, that's nice. Would you mind stepping into the booth while I record it? I'd love to. Stop that hocus pocus, boy. Things get out of focus, you and the way that you kiss, they ought to give you a prize. Baby, you could make a statue come to life just looking at you. Gee, but you're beautiful. Oh, but you're beautiful, you and your beautiful eyes. You you're so observant, and you're beautiful but so unurban. The town is so beautiful. Eyes. May start my head in swelling. When Tell me some more. You start that whole jumping, Jiminy Cricket, Martin. Let's try them on the side, oh baby. You can make a statue. Come to life just looking at you. Don't stop. Gee, but you're beautiful. Don't stop. Oh, but they're beautiful. Oh, you, you and your are beautiful. You're going to make this your life's work? What do you want from me? Why don't you worry about what you're doing? I'll worry about what I'm doing. I never made this stuff before in my life. When those guys are ready for it, I'll give it to them. But it's got to be finished. Worry about what you're doing. Let me worry about what I'm doing. I never saw anything like this in my whole life. Who are you? Good boy, Corwin. Good boy. Now, come on, let's go down to the little old dispensary, huh? What? The where? The little old dispensary. We're going to take the little old arm, then we'll roll up the little old sleeve, then we'll get the little old needle, and then we'll give you the little old shot, and it ain't going to hurt a little old bit. Come on. You sure it ain't going to hurt? No, it won't hurt you a bit. Come on. Good boy. Go ahead. Believe me when I tell you something. You won't even feel the little old needle. Come on. I don't feel the little old needle. Ah, oh, won't even hurt you a little bit. Won't hurt a little bit. No. Is that square needle? Round needle. Relax. Sleep. Come on, think of something pleasant. You're eating ice cream. You're dancing with a beautiful, beautiful girl. You're sleeping in a white, dreamy bed. I didn't get the last part. Now, that didn't hurt a bit, did it? How do you feel? Feel good? Okay? Come on, let's go. 
Corwin! Come in. Does this finish up your malaria shots? Yes, Corporal. And me too. Here, take this note into the mess, Sergeant. How do you feel? How do you think I feel? What do they think I am in here? A pin cushion? You said it wouldn't like me. You'll live. You'll live. That's what I'm afraid of. Morning, Clark. Morning, Captain. As you were... Puccinelli, I talked to Colonel Davis, and he's going to put you on that overseas movement. That's swell, Captain. Did Corporal Clark tell you about the woman who was in the orderly room yesterday? Yes, sir. She's having trouble locating some man in the company, and I want you to find the man. Yes, sir. I'll try, but it won't be easy. She could make things nasty if she got to the colonel. Will you take care of it? Uh, I'll do my best, sir. Good. And as soon as you find the man, I want to see him. Yes, sir. How do you like that? Now I'm in charge of domestic relations. Even that little alert gag I pulled on Miller just to kiss her a few times. You know, that could develop a... Hey, stop them lights. The colonel's coming by. As you were. Sergeant Puccinelli, I'd like to see your copy of the master training schedule. It's supposed to be posted permanently on the bulletin board. Yes, sir. Corporal Clark, show the colonel where we posted the schedule. Oh, that. What was that? Uh, he said it's right over here, sir. It's, uh, it's here, sir. I can't see it. Well, it's, it's, I'm sure I put it here. Well, it doesn't seem to be here now. I think it's in the other room, Colonel. Uh, what was that? I think it's in the other room. Oh, Colonel. At ease. Good morning, Colonel. Good morning, Caldwell. We can't seem to find a copy of that master training schedule. It should be posted in every orderly room. It's probably there, sir. No, it isn't on that board. I can't understand why it isn't up. Here it is. I hope it looks better than your orderly room. Sergeant Puccinelli! that door. someday to see a copy of that master training schedule. We found it, sir. It was posted under SOP. Oh, yes. Well, no wonder I didn't see it. It's too dark in here. Turn on those lights. Here's the envelope from Battalion. So you're really gonna ship me out? That's right. Well, cutie, I had a nice little talk last night with Millie. And? And? And I'll give you the rest of the day to get my name off that list. Don't threaten me. Get out. Wait a minute. It's a pleasure. Here's a telegram for Corwin. Give it to him in a mess hall. Sergeant Puccinelli, Colonel Davis is going to inspect the supply room. And following that, the mess hall. Yes, sir. Hey, Miller. Yeah? The colonel's going to inspect in a minute. Oh, no, Sarge! Ditch this for me. Coming out of Pimlico. Where am I going to hide this? I love one for Louis. I love one for Miss O'Reilly. Another one. Wait Return up. Return the charges. Captain, what's gotten into this company? Well, a few things have gone wrong, sir, a but... A few things. Captain, I have never... 
was that? Sounds like the mess hall. Mess hall? Signal's over! What's the meaning of it? Sergeant Puccinelli, what's going on here? What's that whistle? Is it a fire? What is it? It's a baby! Rick, look! It's a little baby! Look! We got it! Look, when we first married, we didn't think we'd have any. And now we got a little Colonel! Rick! The Colonel said this is the most outrageous company he's ever seen. And he's canceled you off that shipping order. You mean I can't go overseas? That's right. And here it is in writing. Not only that, he's given all us B Company officers a big fat map problem. I'm sorry, sir. Yes, sir. How do you like that? Five years in this man's army. Five years and the day before I go on shipment, I get caught in this filthy machinery. Man age. What's the first class this afternoon? Calisthenics. Oh, fine. That's all I need. There's got to be an easier way to make a living. I don't see how we can identify these small islands just by their topography. Well, I'm afraid this little number will keep us busy for a week. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Caldwell. Good afternoon. How soon will you be ready? Well, well, well. All dressed up to go places, I see. I'm afraid that for once in my life, I have a surprise for you. Really? It seems that without consulting you, the Colonel has given B Company officers a special problem which will undoubtedly take all night to do. What kind of problem? We have to identify a number of South Pacific Islands by their topography. Sally said you wouldn't get that till tomorrow. Then you must have done something to anger Sally because she gave it to us today. Well, I'll tell her a thing or two. I might have come out without the answers. The uh, answers? answers? Yes, I have them right here. Someplace. Here you are. Munich, Strasbourg. These aren't the answers. Oh, that's B Company. Here's yours. Er, Kosal, Tagawa, I... Duray? If I thought there was another woman like Dorothy on this earth, I'd tell you to get married at once. Honey, this is wonderful. I'm certainly glad you appreciate me. Well, I've got a few things to pick up at the PX. And I'll be back to pick you up in exactly 20 minutes. Uh-oh. I better get this to Captain Steiner and C Company. At ease, men. Oh, that McVeigh. Can you imagine that? He wants another good conduct ribbon. How does he lose so many? I don't know. He gets plastered and deals them out like fraternity pins. Hey, the Colonel's checking calisthenics. Miller, the officer! I beg your pardon, sir. Yes, what is it? The colonel is checking orderly rooms. Sergeant Miller on duty, sir. Where's Sergeant Puccinelli? With the company. Taking calisthenics, sir. Shall I get him for you, sir? No. No, the exercise will be good for him. Yes, sir. Uh, Miller. Yes, sir. At ease. What's the name of that sergeant, the one with the whistle? Oh, you mean McVeigh, sir. Yes. I want you to find McVeigh immediately. Tell him to get this entire outfit on the obstacle course in ten minutes, understand? Yes, sir. I 
call and come out. Let's be getting on the phone. Let's get out of here. the way I used to. Well, I'm glad to see they finally fixed that stop drink machine. Well, I think I'll go in there and take care of that supply sergeant now. Do you know, he turns the same articles in for salvage over and over again. I think he's going to open up an army and navy store. As you were. 
Sergeant Miller? Yes, Sergeant. Hey, where's Sergeant Puccinelli? I don't know. Boy, he's sure in trouble again. The Colonel's after him, the Captain's after him, and Millie's after him. I wouldn't trade places with him with 14 points. I see you took care of that supply situation to your satisfaction. Yes, sir. I don't think we'll have any more trouble with Sergeant Miller. I have to get on to my next class. Oh, that was close. The Colonel almost had me that time. Got a cigarette? Yeah, sure, Sarge. Here, roll your own. That'll be all, Sergeant Miller. What's Miller featuring today? Forty medium? Match. Yes, sir. Uh, have you made any progress finding out about that girl? What girl? The one who was in the orderly room yesterday. Oh, yes, sir. I have a hunch, sir. I want to see that man as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Hey, where's Corwin? He's in the rec hall rehearsing. Rehearsing? For what? That'll become a mental case? Come on, let's go. Where? See Captain Caldwell. What I do now? You'll find out, and I'm delivering you COD. Come on. What about the number? What number? You promised Broker you'd do it. Well, tell him to get with it, but hurry up. All right, go ahead, ask him. But watch how you ask him in a nice way. Use a little diplomacy. You say, Pokey, will you play a song for Vic and I? We're going to dance. Because you and me, Alvin, we're going to be together a long, long time. You and me, we're friends, right? So I asked Pokey. Go ahead, ask him and I'll wait till you're all through. Because I have nothing else to say. Go ahead. You say, Pokey, play some music for Vic and I. Go ahead. Now wait till you're all through. What are you waiting for? Don't make... All right! I forgot what I was going to ask him now. Oh, yeah. Pokey, would you play this dance number for Vic and I? We're going to do this together? Sure. Thanks a heap. Old time dance? Old time dance, huh?
14 bars of the song. We're, we're Vic and I go out, and we do the last bars of the finish of the song. Ready? One, two, three, and... No, the whole band, they should play it together. And... I think we go and no one did it. Like, what are you waiting for? Look, Buster, I don't do it unless the sergeant tells me. Figures. Ooh -hoo. Okay, poker. <laughs> Let's quiet down now. We'd like to present First Sergeant Victor Puccinelli and Private First Class Alvin Corlin, doing their impression of two great personalities. Well, top morning to your father. How are you, me boy? I just thought I'd stop over now, son. And let you know that I don't like the idea of it in St. Dominic's Church. Well, can't hate to see you leave the place too, fella. I was just wondering if I might ask a wee bit of a favor now, son. Well, go right ahead. I'd love for you to sing with me, old Irish lullaby. Just once again now before you go. Well, now which little Irish lullaby is speaking about? When you did the night I was so sick in bed, son. You remember that one now, don't you, lad? Well, couldn't really do it for it tonight. Father got to have a little music behind me now, you know that. But I've got the music box. Just sang with it once. You can do it again. Won't you try now, son? Well, shouldn't be a pleasure to do it for you. Just open it right up and show play an eye. Sir, would you still like to see the man I spoke to you about? The one that caused all the trouble? Definitely. Yes, sir. Corwin. Come here. Private First Class Corwin reporting, sir. As ordered. At ease. Corwin? What's your first name? Alvin. Alvin? Yes, sir. Alvin. Bringing children into the world is a solemn matter. Solemn, sir? I didn't think it was so solemn. That's the trouble. Sometimes we don't realize it until it's too late. Now, what do you intend to do about this matter? Nothing, sir. Everything's been done already. That's the wrong attitude entirely. Aren't you ashamed? No, sir. I'm very proud. Proud? Yes, sir. We wanted a baby, so we got a baby. You wanted a baby? Yes, sir. But don't you understand? You can't let this baby grow up without a name. I know. We'll think of a name for it. That's not what I mean. Now, Corwin, listen to me closely. Do you have any love for this woman? Yes, sir. I love her very much. Well, then my job should be simple. I'm going to give you a three-day pass so you can go to this girl and do right by her. Oh, thank you, sir. But understand, this pass is only to give this baby a name. Three day pass to think of a name. I know, sir. We'll name it after you. That's not necessary. But I'll tell you this. 
When a baby's born, I'll see that you get an emergency furlough. Sure, but I... No buts about it. That'll be all. Get into Class A uniform. Yes, sir. Buccinelli, I've decided to give Corwin a three-day pass. A pass? But, Captain, after what he did? Well, I have to give him a pass. So he can get married. Get married? What for? Buccinelli. Is this or is this not the man who's in trouble? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's in trouble, all right, sir. What he means is that the baby's already been born. Is that right, Corwin? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Y yes, ma'am. Yes, Sergeant. Well, that's different. Give me that pass. Oh, but, Captain... We'll give you an emergency furlough. Oh, thank you. But get this, Corwin. You'd better bring back a marriage certificate. Oh, that's easy. I got one in a barrel. Uh, he doesn't mean his own, sir. One of the boys has one tacked up on the wall. Corwin, you better get ready to go. Yes, Sergeant. Well, I'm off to battalion. Sir, you want me to type up these furlough papers? No, I'll have it done at headquarters. I want to push it right through. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. Clark, don't leave me here alone. Kitty! Millie, what a surprise to see you here. I've been trying so hard to see you. Nellie, come here. Now, tell me the truth. Are you going to have a... Yes, Dick. Where did you hear? Where did I hear? Why, it's practically a coast-to-coast -coast hookup. Look, honey, step into the captain's office. Just a minute. No! There's too much traffic in there. Please, Millie. Come in. Victor Puccinelli, I have a few questions to ask you. Helen, listen. And the first one has to do with Jack Edwards. Oh, well, if that's all that's bothering you... Listen, cutie. Please, Mitch. Who was that girl? Uh, Mrs. Caldwell, the captain's wife. Oh. If you send Jack Edwards out of this camp, consider our relationship at an end. Oh, you wouldn't do that, would you, honey? <laughs> On the contrary. I'm not sure I'm in love with either one of you, but... Well, I want to be fair to you both. Oh, so look, sure. Good afternoon, Sergeant. Oh, Captain Caldwell, uh, Miss Palmer, I'd like to have you meet her. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, Captain, I think you want it down to battalion headquarters. Oh, oh. hello. Can I help you? Oh, thank you. Lieutenant Davenport. Now, wait a minute. Don't mix me up in this. Maybe I'd better leave. No, one moment. You've made a startling recovery, haven't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Sergeant Puccinelli. Yes, sir. Oh, there he is. Corwin, come in here. Sit down, young lady. Can you explain... Private First Class Corwin reporting is ordered, sir. Will you kindly explain why this young lady is sitting here completely recovered and you're about to... And you're about to start an emergency furlough? Recovered, sir? What was wrong with her? Don't try to be funny. I don't understand, Captain. I never saw that woman before last night. You never saw her before last night? No. Then why do you think you're getting this furlough? Because my wife had a baby. Your wife had a baby? Yes, sir. Here's a telegram I got. Well, I think I get this now. Do you know him? No, but he's cute. Look, well, here's your furlough. Take it and get out. Thank you, Captain. Yes, sir. And give my love to the baby. Yes, sir. I will, sir. Thank you, Captain. Bye. Now, young lady, where is everybody? Sergeant Puccinelli. Yes, sir. Do you realize this whole mess is still up in the air? Corrin wasn't the man. He wasn't, sir? I can't understand your attitude lately. I guess I'll have to take care of this myself. Get me that company roster with the physical descriptions of the men. Yes. Well, I, I suppose we should introduce ourselves. I'm Helen Palmer, and this is uh, Captain Caldwell's wife. And who are you? I'm not quite sure. Uh, the captain would like to see you. You. Me? Oh, but I was just in there. 
Ernie Caldwell. What's the meaning of this? She was introduced to me as your wife. Now, wait a minute. What do you mean you said you had just been in here? I was just in here. I was here last night, too. The desk was here. There was a chair there. And there was... Now, a... darling, this is an army matter. It's not your affair. Now, young lady, what's the meaning of Captain, this? Captain, I... Sergeant Puccinelli. Ernest Caldwell. Can't you stay outside until this is settled? If there's anything going on, I want to know about well, it. Well, let's both get outside, and I'll try to explain. I don't understand. But Captain! Oh, come on, Millie. Let's get out of here. But I still don't understand. Why is everybody picking on me? Hiya, cutie. Well, honey, what are you doing here? Well, I was worried. I came over to ask Vic about you going on that shipment. Oh, well, don't worry. Cutie will see that I don't go. Come on, why don't you give up? You can't win. But, Janelle, we have something that must be said. Ah, just a minute, sir. For five years, this army has been deciding things for me to do. But I'm in the driver's seat this time. I don't want to be a warrant officer. I want to go overseas. I want to get away from everything, away from all this. You can't dodge the issue that easily. Besides, you're not a private. That's there's something else I'm deciding. I'm busting myself. You can't do that. I can't, but you can do it for me. Watch. Oh, oh honey. Ernie. Ernie. What? What did you call him? Ernie. Did he say he was Ernie Caldwell? Yes. Then there is well, something. Ladies, yes. please. Now, if you'll just wait, dear. Is he the man you've been going steady with? I only met him last night. Last night? Please, miss. Oh, I think this whole thing is silly. Let's get out of here. Now then, miss. You must have gone out with another man in this company. Present, sir. Oh, so it's you, Puccinelli. Well, I'm going to give you exactly what you asked for. You'll be reduced to private and shipped overseas. Thank you, sir. And don't think this relieves you of your responsibilities to this woman you're married to. Married to me? Now don't deny it. Oh, but he isn't. I'm already married to someone else. John Slager have been since a week after I broke up with Vic. Well, what have you been looking for me for? Because I wanted to tell you not to come to see me tonight, like you promised four months ago, before John and I were married. You won't come, will you? Only Toledo, no. Oh, I'm so glad. You see, my husband might not understand. He's not very bright, and I don't want to cause any trouble. Oh, well... Goodbye, and thanks so much. <laughs> Forget it. Don't think this will clear you. We're still busting you. Okay, so I'm busting. For once, I've beaten the Army. While all these other guys are rotting here in the States, I'll be on the other side, and the Army had nothing to do with it. I did it all myself. What the devil's that? I don't know, sir. Sounds like a special call. I'd better... Captain Caldwell, did you hear the news? All movements, transfers, and furloughs have been canceled. Movements canceled? Sure. The whole outfit's going overseas. But darling, why didn't you? Sally never told me. Ernie Caldwell, step into my office. You've got a lot of explaining to do. Hey, follow me. Sarge, I just caught this man trying to sneak off the post. Don't bother me. I'm out of business. Sneak off the post? Nothing. I got a brother. I got to see my baby. Nobody don't got no furlough. I am. Are you right? I am. Are you right? I am. Quiet! All furloughs is canceled. Canceled? That's right. The whole division's gone overseas. Overseas? Come on. Let's be going. Wait a minute. You two. Me too. That's right, Private Punch, and I'll join your buddy. Come on, let's be getting on a ball. Pick it up. Pick what up? The suitcase. Private Puccinelli. Vic. Come on. Okay. 